So what I've done here in this particular case is now zoom in on this section 26 so that we have section 26. Now understand that each one of these sections is going to follow what we're going to do here. Section 25, section six, section four. So this is just an example of how section six works. And there's we've got to identify this mile because it is way too big. So what we're going to do is subdivide this section into four quadrants. All right. So what we have now is four quadrants of section 26. This is going to be what? The northeast quadrant. It's a quadrant because it's divided into four. It, this is the northwest quadrant. This would be the southwest quadrant. And this would be the southeast quadrant. Now, we know that this section is one mile by one mile. But what you also need to know is each section is 640 acres big. That is something you are going to need to know for the exam. One square mile or one section is 640 acres. What we have now done is divide that 640 acres into four quadrants. How many acres is that quadrant? I'll help you out and do the math for you. That northeast quadrant is 160 acres. The southeast quadrant is 160 acres. Get it? So now here, what we have is the northeast quadrant of section 26 of two ranges west, three tiers north of principal meridian number two. That is the description of this 160 acres right here. Could you find me now? I'll let you think about it for a minute. The answer is no. So what we're going to do is take each one of those quadrants and divide it into quadrants. Let's just do it by hand. How big is each one of those quadrants? The answer is 40 acres, right? 160 divided by four. So now how do I identify this quadrant right here? Well, that's real simple. It is the northeast quadrant. It is the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant, right? Because look at this down here. This is also the northeast quadrant of the southwest quadrant. So you've got to make sure you identify working from the smaller to the bigger. And what you have is this is the, these 40 acres are identified as the Northeast quadrant of the Northeast quadrant of section 26 of two ranges west, three tiers north of principal meridian number two. That would be the legal description for these 40 acres. Now, could you find me now? <laughs> the answer is no. So we're going to do it one more time. All right. 
So we're going to take that northeast quadrant and we're going to divide it into a quadrant as well. And realize that this quadrant right up here, how big is it? It is 10 acres. 10 acres is the smallest plot of land you can buy without developing it further. All right. So this 10 acres right here would be the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant of section 26 of two ranges west, three tiers north of principal meridian number two. So let me write that down just so that we can see it. I'm going to try and do it this way. It's the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant of section 26 of what do we use to range west three tier north of principal meridian number two try and make it all one line there you go that is the legal address this is the legal address of those 10 acres the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant of section 26 of two range west three tier north of principal meridian number two Ta-da! So, just for fun, we're going to play a little bit of games here, and we're going to see if how we do on this. So, let's go back to this section, and what we're going to do, let's use a different color so we can see what we're doing. Let's go to green. We are going to use this quadrant right here what is that legal address right there hit pause think about it for a moment all right let's we're back so what we need to do is start in the little and work out right so it would be the northeast quadrant of the northwest quadrant. Here's the little northeast quadrant, right? Here's the little northeast quadrant. Of this one here, that would be the northwest quadrant. That's where we go there now. Of the of the northwest quadrant. Northwest quadrant of we, the big circle is back here. So that's the northwest quadrant again. The northwest quadrant of section 26 of, and then the rest is the same, so we don't really need it for this purpose. Everybody get that? Did you see how we got it? It's the northeast quadrant, the little one, of the northwest quadrant, of the northwest quadrant, of section 26, of two range west, three tier north, of principal meridian number two. Now, if you did not get that, I suggest you stop go back in the video and watch it again. You can feel free to email me, Raymond at realuniversity.com, and we could go over a couple more examples if you are having issues, all right? 
This is how the legal description gets used. So in the title work, it's not going to say 432 South Emerson. It's going to say this big, long description right here. That's what we are going to convey. All right? Cool. So now the only problem that we have is the fact that it runs, and here is on your notes, you will notice all the stuff I just covered. 36 sections. Um, it, we are right here on number 12. If you want to learn to read it, watch this. Let's go back to this. How do we read addresses? Well, we actually read addresses backwards, and we don't really know it. We do it so fast, we've done it so long in our lives, we don't really know we read addresses backwards. Because what that person should have done was looked at my address and went, okay, it's Indiana, Greenwood, then the uh, address. So watch this. If I was given this address and I wanted to find it, just like a regular address, United States, Indiana, Greenwood, the address. So if you were given hint, hint, a test question, let's say, and they said, okay, here's three legal addresses, and we want you to tell us which uh, is the one colored in, and we said, okay, here's sample number one. You literally would start backwards and go, okay, let's find principal meridian number two. There it is. And then it's two ranges west, three tiers north. Okay, two ranges west, three tiers north. That's that township right here. And then section 26. So we look at that township. We would find section 26. And then we would go the northeast quadrant. That's right there. Of the northeast quadrant. That's right there. And the northeast quadrant. It's that 10 acres right there. It's the only 10 acres in the entire United States that you could end up with if I told you, hey, I want you to pick me up for school tomorrow, and here is my legal description. You would only find one 10-acre plot in the entire United States. All right? That is why we use the legal description rather than using a street address. We do that because it is much easier. So now, let's look at some math calculations that might help you on the test as well. We know the way that we broke this down in from a 640 to 160 to 40 to 10, we know that this legal description right here has 10 acres, right? because that is, you saw me break it down. There is actually a faster way to figure the number of acres. So you could actually draw this picture out and show and count the acres, or do you want a fast cheat way? That's what I thought. So let's do this. Let's move this up here for a second. And let's say I asked you, how many acres are in this plot? Now, we know there's 10 because we've already drawn this. But watch this. Let me ask you a question. In each one of these fractions right here, do you guys know what number is the denominator? Right? I am the denominator. The denominator is the actual bottom number of a fraction. So when you look at a fraction and you see one-fourth, you understand that that is the denominator is the bottom fraction, the bottom number of a fraction. Let me state it that way. So if we wanted to know how many acres, we could literally draw this out and go, oh, 640, 160, 40, 10. Or we could take the four denominators, 
or in this case, the three denominators, what are they? Four, and then the second one is four, and the second one, or the third one, is four. And we just multiply those together. Four times four times four is what? 16 times 4 is 64. How many acres did I tell you were in every section? I told you you would need to memorize this. There are 640 acres in a section. How many times does 64 go into 640? The answer is 10. That's the number of acres that are there. So let's do one more. Let's just make up something and let's say the north half. Let's use that one. The north half. Make this a little bit bigger here so that we can. The north half of the northeast quadrant of the south half of blah, 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 blah. I ask you on a test question, how many acres are in this property? So what I want you to do is take a minute, hit pause, and tell me how many acres are in this piece of property. Now we could draw it or we could do the math. So hit pause and do the math. All right, we're back. So I told you this was the mileage or the acreage. So let's take the denominator of each one of those, two times four times two. When you take two times four times two, you get 60 or 16. <laughs> oh, well. 16 goes into 640 40 times. So your quick answer on this is this math, this piece of property is 40 acres big. Move on to the next question. Understand that every test question is designed for you to finish in under a minute. Because one of two things are going to happen. You're going to look at this math and go 2 times 4 times 2 is 16 divided by 6, 4 is 40. And you'll be done in 4 or 5 seconds. Or, unfortunately, I hate to say it, somebody might go, I have no idea, and they're going to move on. Either way, you're going to be done in a minute, all right? There is no long, hard, complicated derivations that you're going to be doing in any of this. It is designed for you to do a very quick answer of under a minute for each question. So when people ask me, how long should I take to do the quiz or the test or the state exam? Think about that. Should not take you more than a minute per question. If it does, you probably need to study that concept a little better because they're not going to be really hard, drawn out, long complication kind of concepts. Okay? So this is the government rectangular survey set method. Now, here is the problem with this. It ceases to exist when we get to something less than 10 acres, all right? And I don't know about you, but how many people actually live on 10 acres? I don't, do you? So we've got to take into consideration something that is smaller than 10 acres. That is where the third system comes in here called the lot and block system, all right? the lot and block, or the plat system. It is used inside of that 10 acres. Now, you could also use the meets and bounds inside of that 10 acres as well. And what ends up happening is this 10 acres, let's go back over here and look at this. We'll just draw a square to start with. That 10 acres is then developed by a developer where they're going to come in. Remember, and I told you they're going to put the road in. Then they're going to create the lots for the houses to, that they're going to build. 
and for the sake of ease, we're going to say this whole thing in here is green space and a park and all that. So he's got one lot, two lot, three lot, four lot, five lot, six, seven, eight, nine lots in this housing division. And they're going to name this housing division Modulin Estates. <laughs> That's me, remember. Modulin Estates. And I'm going to sell this house to you. It is Modulin Estates, lot two of the Northeast Quadrant of the Northeast Quadrant of the Northeast Quadrant of Section 26 of Two Ranges West, Two Tiers North, Principal Radian Number Two. There is no way in the world anybody else could end up in any other driveway than that one. Because if they pulled into that one, that would be lot three of Modulin Estates. And these get recorded in those plat books and recorded by the state so that it's easy to find. Now what they do, to make it even more simpler, is they actually take this address here and they might rename that address as Platt Book, and I'm making up a number here, 42, all right? So now it becomes even easier because mod this house right here is Modulin Estates, Lot 2, per Platt Book, number 42. Per Platt Book, number 42. Now I don't have to keep saying the Northeast Quadrant of the Northeast Quadrant of the Northeast Quadrant and blah, 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 every time because that is actually defined as Platt Book 42. So I can literally just say Lot 2 of Modulin Estates per Platt Book 42 and there's only one of these in the entire world. That is actually how this is done. That would be the third method. Now understand, I could have, let's change the story. I told you earlier, I love changing the story. Let's go back to that 10 acres. Let's assume that there is a creek that runs through this. Remember the example that we gave with the meets and bounds where I said it starts at the point of beginning and it goes so many feet east to a monument to the center thread of the creek, follow the center thread of the creek and back to the point of beginning. Maybe I'm only selling two five acre lots because I'm going to build high end homes. I could have used that meets and bounds that we used way back in that earlier chapter and say that back to the point of beginning of the Northeast Quadrant of the Northeast Quadrant of the Northeast Quadrant, or shorten it, I could have said point of beginning and back to the point of beginning per Plat Book 42. So I could use the lot and block system, or I can use the meets and bounds inside of the regular survey method because it allows when you start getting into that smaller than 10 acres, you need to do that. Take a break. Take a deep breath. Go back. Revisit that if you need to.